I am in an isolated part of the world in an Akka village located in the Golden Triangle, the place where the borders of Thailand, Laos and Myanmar meet. The Akka tribe migrated here centuries ago from China and Tibet. They still speak their own language, which has been passed down from generation to generation through ceremonies like this. The Akka tribe follows the belief of Ananism, the presence of good and bad spirits in non-human things such as animals, plants and objects. These Akka women sitting around you are performing a ritual to bless their coffee crops. So my mission starts here, in the jungles of northern Thailand. I'm usually scouring the planet looking for ingredients to put in my cooking. But now I'm on a mission for one of the most extraordinary coffees in the world, black ivory coffee. And it's made using the help of Asian giants, the elephant from this part of the world. So this is the start of Jabba's coffee plantation. And you can see we've just come out of the thick jungle and it's quite open here, but there's still lots of trees and it's really shady. And the coffee in Northern Thailand loves the shade, which is why it does so well. Shade grown coffee. ที่มาเปียงเนาะนี่เนี่ยเดียเปียดิคุณรู้แค่ของเปียชีคุณรู้แค่ของเปียชีอยู่นี่เดียเปียงอ่ะนะเปียกาน่าอีกเยอะดี
and he's gonna introduce me to his giant friends who are responsible for turning those cherries into the most expensive coffee in the world. I have arrived at the elephant camp in Chiang Rai. This is where I'll be cooking for the elephants that have been saved from logging and street begging. Blake, the owner of Black Ivory Coffee, will show me how these elephants help to turn these Arabica coffee cherries into little nuggets of gold. Like, what do we have to do to turn this into the most expensive coffee in the world? Because it has made one hell of a journey to get here. <laughs> uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to add some gourmet tropical fruits uh, to the mix and we're going to give it to the elephants. So in here, this is like their staple sort of treat. Right. What we've got in here so far is we've got some rice bran, uh, water and banana. And then we're going to go nuts with the fruits. So just add the fruits in and make like a gourmet breakfast for them. Is exactly. that the idea? And yep. they'll eat They'll eat pretty much all that's here? All the, Everything that's there, they will eat. Okay, so I can just start ho ho tossing it all in, huh? Sure, go for it. How does a Canadian end up being in Thailand creating the most expensive coffee in the world? <laughs> um, well, I used to work with civets, another animal in Ethiopia for a year trying to make a, a similar type of coffee. All kinds of problems with disease and ethics, counterfeiting. So uh, I started looking at other animals and around that time I heard about elephants coming from uh, out of the forest into uh, attacking the coffee fields. So I knew at that point that elephants actually did eat coffee. And uh, that was 10 or more than 10 years ago. Wow. And so how long have you, literally it's taken you 10 years to get to the point to figure this out? 10 years to get it right. And, uh, and I've been in Thailand six years. Wow, that's amazing. So I mean, I've got now in here just a bunch of fruits that I've mixed in. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the one other thing that needs to go in here is the coffee. Is that right? Right, so, so, so how much do we put in? You're going to want to put in uh, a couple of handfuls. So Any, should I put some in yours? Sure. Just like that much? Yep, that's good. And the idea is that this is meant to be more of a stack, that's fine. Yep. That's enough. That's enough. Same for me? Yep. So mm. even though elephants can eat 10% of their body weight, in the case of coffee, we just want to mix it in, make it a, a, an enjoyable snack. This is a little treat, basically. Yeah. yeah. So that's all nicely mixed in like that. Yep. Good. I'll just give mine a bit of a. I mean, that is a serious breakfast. Honestly, look at that. I'd eat that. It's coffee, fruit. It's breakfast. Perfect. <laughs> That's it. Can we feed it to them now? Let's do it. Let's do it. Whoa. They're hungry. Straight into it. Oh, man. You greedy elephant. You want some? So, Blake, what's actually happening to the coffee when it goes into the elephant? Um, well, two things are essentially taking place. Um, one, I'm gonna put, put it down. down. Here you go. Here you go. The first one is that the um, there's fermentation taking place. The elephants are herbivores, and if you think about wine and grapes, it's the same thing that's happening in the elephant's stomach. Essentially, the the coffee's going inside. It's fermenting up to 72 hours, and in that period, all the flavor from the cherry and also the other food is mixing together in the stomach, fermenting and really giving it a distinctive flavor. That's the first. And the second is elephants have enzymes that break down the protein. Protein is one of the reasons why you have bitterness. Take away the protein, you've got a less bitter coffee. Wow. And why elephants? I mean, like you could have used any animal. I mean, honestly, why these magnificent beasts? <laughs> um, well, essentially, this is the best choice. If you consider things like how accessible the animal needs to be, can you get close to it without killing you? Uh, dental structure, monogastric, one stomach. Um, all of these factors together um, basically result in an elephant being the only choice. Amazing. But you couldn't use an African elephant because that would kill you. I so wouldn't want to do it. It's got to be the Asian elephant. Yeah, anything wild, wild elephant, period, I wouldn't want to get near. So these ones work. These guys are good. So basically, all of the magic of this coffee happens in the digest digestive yeah. tract of the animal. Exactly. So we'll find out the rest in about 72 hours. There you go. And you've got to go to the other end to collect the coffee. Yep. <laughs> there you go. This guy's hungry, man. He enjoyed his breakfast. <laughs> Give him that much. That was a good breakfast, wasn't it? Beautiful.
the Anantara Golden Triangle Resort. This luxury resort is where I finally get the chance to experience the taste of black ivory coffee. Welcome to the Anantara Golden Triangle. Wow, this is impressive. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. I'm here for, I've been here for about four years. Okay. And, um, you know, it's luxury hotels like this that, that serve black ivory coffee. And, you know, essentially, even though the, the coffee is, is quite expensive, the idea is that the benefits from this is going back to the community and to the people who take care of the elephants and so that we're really making a difference. It's not just about the yeah. profit and the money side. Yeah. But in order to do that, I suppose you're adding value and cost to the product the whole time because you pay quite a high price for the mahouts. Right. You go through a hell of a process to make sure that the, the coffee is good and so that sort yeah. of adds to the story but also adds to the, the cost but also adds to the value. Right. Every step of the value chain, is, we're, we're paying a premium but yeah. we're also making sure we're paying fair wages, that we're giving back, we're supporting a charity yeah. so that everyone benefits. And, and ultimately, I think when people try Black Ivory Coffee, they're going to feel good. And I think yeah. that's part of the experience. Awesome. Nice. So let's walk out. I'm going to take you to the place where we can actually try the coffee. Ah, oh, yes. Now we're talking. Yes. <laughs> Come a long way for this cup of coffee. Wow. The aroma of that is just incredible. I mean, it's just super like stick your head in a bag mm. of chocolate, you know. It's very, very chocolatey. Um, but the proof will be in the drinking. That's right. So cheers. Cheers. Oof. Okay. That is good. I mean, it's not heavy like an espresso, right. you know, thick and dark. Yep. It's sort of light, but then packed full of flavor. Very chocolatey, mm -hmm. a little bit of grass, sort of a little bit of citrus of mm -hmm. some sorts in there. Mm -hmm. um, but the main thing for me is that there's no bitterness. Right. I think it's that's very easy to drink. Yeah. Really, really key there. Yeah. So it's sort of sweet rather than bitter yep. in its own way, which I mean, it really does stand alone. Thank you. From that perspective, I'm very impressed. <laughs> very, so. very impressed. But how much? How much is going to cost me? Um, one pack on our website is uh, eighty-five dollars US. Yeah. It uh, serves two to four people roughly, and one kilo is roughly US two thousand dollars making this the most expensive coffee in the world and the world's rarest. 2,000 bucks a kilo? Yep. Wow. Okay, I can see it because it goes through a process yep. and it really is very, very good. Yep. And you can see a lot of hard work and love has gone into this. So uh, yeah, it's a privilege to have experienced this and, and this is something I will not forget ever. <laughs> so you. thank you for that. My it's pleasure. very, very good. As is the tradition in Thailand, I take an offering of black ivory coffee to one of the last solitary Buddhist monks in the region to express my gratitude. This has been such an amazing journey. I've been privileged to experience the hospitality of Thailand and the Aka people and to taste their amazing coffee. A once in a lifetime experience that I would recommend to anyone.